Hey, Mark Testa here, Chief Health and Wellness Officer with Pine Pollen Superfoods and Train for Longevity. Today I want to talk just a few minutes about pine pollen and what it is and how it works and what we know about it. So uh, let me be the first to advise. This is not medical advice. I'm not recommending this uh, in lieu of medical care or to treat any condition. I'm not diagnosing anything, but let's just talk about pine pollen. So as the name implies, this comes, this is the pollen off pine trees. It's the yellow stuff you see all over the sidewalk in your car uh, during the springtime. I know here where I live, we see this very prolifically here in the next few months. And so they're able to collect this stuff in droves, particularly from northern hemispheres, China and Russia, and really um, aggregate it in large bulk. And people use this as a nutritional supplement in the West and really probably all over the world. And they use it in capsules. They use it just as raw pine pollen in smoothies. Um, it's also available in tincture, which is a great way to take it as well. And um, in MCT oil, it tastes like a pine tree uh, to a large extent. So, look, this has been around for millennia, and different cultures around the world have used it, specifically the uh, Chinese and traditional Chinese medicine, and to a lesser extent, the Koreans in food and uh, even somewhat to a lesser extent, the Ayurvedic Indian um, uh, culture and healing tradition. But um, interestingly, in India, the place that didn't use it the most, uh, it, it was uh, used as an aphrodisiac. So take that for what it's worth. I think they knew what, something that was going on with Tantra over there and pine pollen. Uh, traditional Chinese medicine used this quite a bit in China. Uh, used for restorative properties, a longevity tonic, and anti-aging nutrient. Uh, also used in TCM for lungs and joint pain and fatigue and an endurance and strength to support the GI system, uh, increase mental agility, uh, help with prostate health. So the Chinese used herbs quite a bit. Now, interestingly, we don't know exactly if it was a pharmacological uh, connection, meaning that there was a um, something in this that helped improve all these things, or as one of my teachers also from China posed to me that the Chinese had nutritional deficiencies and these herbs filled the void of the nutritional deficiencies that they had and they were getting nutrients from these uh, different herbs. The Koreans used uh, pine pollen quite a bit in their food and to cook and to eat with. It's also been used topically for rashes. I'm not itching because I have a rash. <laughs> um, uh, and to stop bleeding. I I'm not sure about the bleeding. Um, I have used other spices to stop bleeding, uh, namely cayenne, which sounds like it would burn, um, but it doesn't, and it does very effectively stop bleeding. Next time I have a bleeder, I'm going to try pine pollen, though. Um, so it's been overlooked quite a bit in the West, like a, a lot of natural things are, and uh, has made a comeback to the extent... Uh, that it that it it can here in the U.S. Uh, there is a lot to this, and what what has brought it back, I think, here in the West is its androgenic properties, the potential to boost uh, testosterone production and help with male virility. Uh, also, there's a lot to going on with this in that there's a lot of amino acids and B vitamins that can be beneficial to the body as well in many ways. So uh, amino acids in the form of uh, that, that can help benefit neurotransmitter uh, productions in the brain and, and peripheral nerves such as serotonin, dopamine, these sorts of things. Um, what else here? Uh, may support nitric oxide function, which may have something to do with the... Uh, androgenic properties uh, uh, of erection, so there is some possibility there. What else? Uh, high in B vitamins, so that B vitamins are so important in converting food to energy and ATP. It's, B vitamins are also used as a catalyst in many metabolic processes, so uh, a lot going on here. 
So, uh, you know, uh, I use pine pollen um, in, well, I have the tincture, so I just use the tincture. I do have the, the powder, which I have not utilized uh, heavily yet, but I'll probably sprinkle that on foods. Um, some use it in smoothies, uh, but look, just like pine pollen in the air, some people can be allergic to this. So if you're ingesting this and you get a runny nose or a stuffy nose or watery eyes, probably best to stop using it. You could be allergic to it. So uh, some information about pine pollen here, you can um, go to the website, pinepollensuperfoods.com and learn more about this. Uh, and thanks for tuning in. I'll have this uh, in a written up blog format for you as well. We'll see you in the next video.